Hey there, and welcome to another instructional video brought to you by Zappysys. In this video, we're going to cover how to retrieve data very easily from an API source using a custom SSIS component. This component is one you'll be able to use after you download and install the Zappysys SSIS Power Pack, and you can get that directly from zappysys.com, hovering over products, SSIS Power Pack, and download the free trial. All right, let's get to it. I'm going to hop over to Visual Studio where I have a project already open and I'm going to create a new package. Straight away you can see these components over here with the ZS prefix and those are all custom components that you'll be able to use once you download and install the Power Pack. I'm going to drag a Dataflow task to the pane and I'm going to open the Dataflow task and you'll see even more custom components with the ZS prefix that you'll be able to use. This video is for the API source component so I'm going to drag that and then I'm going to expand it to configure it. So the first thing we'll need to do is create a new API connection. So I'm going to click the new button. Pick your API connector type from this drop-down list of popular choices. Zappysys has already written the code to connect directly to these types of APIs behind the scenes. In the future, you'll be able to use this search online feature and look up a different connector type. But for now, we're just going to pick from this popular list. And I'm going to pick OData. And then click Continue. So since we've selected the OData connector type, Zappysys knows here's all the configuration that can come along with this connector type. And these are the authentication types. So we could use Windows, Basic, OAuth, etc. If we had picked, say, Amazon, Zappysys knows the only authentication type that Amazon uses is OAuth. And then you would enter your credentials and so right there. But we're going to go back to the OData option. And we're just going to use the no authentication method for this particular video. You would obviously need to refer to your own API documentation to know what your credentials are or authentication type is for the API that you're connecting to. So definitely always refer to your API documentation whenever you have a question. So I'm going to stick with this base URL for this particular example, and I'm just going to hit test connection. And there we go. It works. It was successful. So now there are other configurable, there are other configurable options here. You have this proxy tab, security tab, and even the advanced tab if you want to customize a connector file. Just know that those options are there if you want to explore them. I'm going to stick with this basic option, and I'm going to click OK. So now we have our connector, API 1, that we just made for this OData connector type. And if we wanted to configure it, we could go back and hit this pencil. And now we can edit this type of information. If you wanted to update the raw XML, you could do that as well. Again, I'm going to stick with this very basic one. Sure, we'll continue. I didn't make any changes, so we'll say OK. So the next thing we need to do is pick a table or an endpoint. An endpoint you can think of as per, uh, an action. So let's say you might want to send an email versus a table is a data structure with some columns that maybe you want to query. For this particular example, I'm just going to use the customers table. If you wanted to, you could also add some search criteria. So let's say we knew where customer name equals US or something like that. Obviously this is for an OData connector type so this would need to be specific to whatever syntax goes with that APR connector. And you could use another advanced filter down here. But again we're doing a basic example. Give me all the data. No filters. So I'm just going to click preview data. So this is the customers table for that API connector that we just made. So we could scroll through here. These are the first hundred rows to load if we wanted to take a look at this. Looks great to me. This columns option is also a pretty standard option whenever you're using Zappysys components and you're retrieving data or getting data. So here is where, based on the top 300 rows from that table, Zappysys looks at those columns and said, here's the data type I would suggest. Here's the length I would suggest. But maybe you know you have a special customer ID and they have a very, very long ID and 50 just isn't going to work. So you can always override these and then hit the lock option. And now that customer ID will always be a length of 100. 
So we can scroll through these other options. They look great. I'm gonna say okay. So now we need to put this data somewhere. We got the source data from that API. Where do we wanna put it? So you can go pick another option, OLE DB component. You could use the custom Zappysys upsert component to put it in a database. For this example, I'm just gonna use this trash destination option that Zappysys has created. So it's not gonna go anywhere, but we can see the output if we enable the data viewer. So this is just a custom component that you could save data to a text file if you wanted to just create an audit of the data that you're getting. It's not gonna end up going in a database anywhere. So I'm just gonna click start and this component should reach out to that API, get the data from that customer's table and there we have the data viewer that we've enabled. This is the data that it retrieved and had we picked another component such as a database, this data would have gotten imported into that database. Looks great. That's it. Hopefully you can see how super easy it is to retrieve data from a custom API source using this Zappysys component. If you want to try it out but haven't already downloaded the Power Pack, don't forget to do that right now and the link is in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to the Zappysys YouTube channel to get more updates like this and SSIS tips and tricks in the future.